What one does when faced with the truth is more difficult than you think. I will fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. The second Wonder Woman movie came out on December 25th of last year, and I thought I would dive into the world of this iconic woman. I was captivated by Linda Carter in the 70s and lost count how many times I spun around alongside with her on the television. But unfortunately, I never ended up with a golden lasso or bulletproof cuffs. Until now! Dr. William Marston, also known by the pen name Charles Moulton, was a psychologist, lawyer, professor, author, inventor, and creator of the character Wonder Woman. Although Dr. Marston was educated in law and psychology, he was more interested in learning about the complexities of the human nature. He was also a firm supporter of feminist ideas and believed women were as capable as men. With his wife's help, he invented an early prototype of the lie detector. During the course of this invention, Marston discovered that women were more honest and trustworthy than men. The book, Emotions of Normal People, was published by Dr. Marston in 1928. It was comprised with his research showing that people demonstrate their emotions using four behavior types. Dominance, influence, steadiness, and conscientiousness. Marston claimed that these traits would form a person's sense of self and how they interact with the environment. Marston's DISC theories was then developed into a personality assessment tool by psychologist Walter Clarkin in 1956. DISC theory asserts that all people are a combination of these four personality styles. However, each individual usually only has two or three styles that are predominant, while the rest of the traits rarely present themselves. Marston embraced the complexity of human personalities. He saw a benefit to human beings that are multidimensional. You can see that in his use of opposites within the DISC theory. Dominance and steadiness, which are submissive. Influencing and compliant, which are conscientious. There were three women who helped cultivate the embodiment of Wonder Woman. The first, Elizabeth Holloway Marston attorney, psychologist, and childhood sweetheart and wife of Dr. Marston. Elizabeth Marston was ahead of her time in terms of what was socially acceptable for women. Few women back then earned an educational degree, whereas Elizabeth had three. But she was forbidden from attending Harvard Law School due to her gender. Mary Olive Byrne writer, and the niece of Margaret Sanger. Olive was romantically involved with both Dr. and Mrs. Marston. She was a senior in college when Marston was her teacher and he fell in love with her. Wonder Woman's appearance is believed to be based upon Olive. She reportedly wore heavy bronze bracelets that were the inspiration for the bullet deflecting cuffs. Margaret Higgins Sanger, birth control activist, sex educator, writer, and nurse, and aunt to Olive Byrne. Olive Byrne's mother and her sister Margaret were powerhouses during the early feminist movement and launched the first American birth control clinic. Before meeting Olive, Marston was enthralled in these ladies and their belief of equal rights for women. Marston made headlines for his unique lifestyle. He lived with his wife, Elizabeth, and they had two children. Olive also lived with them and was his polyamorous partner. And she had two children with Marston as well. 
for a long time they had to keep their relationship a secret. Marston passed away from cancer at the age of 54. Elizabeth and Olive continued living together. Marston believed that comic books could be a potential educational tool. In the early 1940s, because of this belief, he was hired to be an educational consultant for national periodicals and all-American publications. Later, these two companies would merge to become DC Comics. During that time, comic books were dominated by super-powered male characters, such as Green Lantern, Batman, and, of course, Superman. Marston witnessed the effect that a male-dominated world had on his wives. Women, Marston believed, deserved a champion of their own, someone who could fight for beauty and truth, not world domination. He said to his colleagues, look, if there was a female superhero, her powers could all be all about love, truth, and beauty. You could also sell your comic books better to girls, and that would be really important because she could show girls that they could do anything. Influenced by the strong, ambitious women in his life, Wonder Woman was designed to be the perfect woman. Going back to Marston's work on disc theory, Wonder Woman possesses a high degree of all the personality styles and takes advantage of all the strengths while minimizing their weaknesses. H. G. Peter sketched these first renderings of Wonder Woman. There was a note to Dr. Marston that said, I slapped these two out in a hurry. The eagle is tough to handle when in perspective or in profile, he doesn't show up clearly. The shoes look like stenographers. I think the idea might be incorporated as sort of a Roman contraption. And then Marston responded, I think the gal with her hand up is very cute. I like her skirt, legs, hair, bracelets, okay, plus boots. Princess Diana of Thermersera's arrival was anything but normal. She was sculpted from clay by her mother, Queen Hippolyta, and given life as an Amazon with superhuman powers. In later years, 2011, DC changed her background with the revision that she is the daughter of Zeus and Hippolyta. On the hidden island of Thamarisa, also known as Paradise Island, Diana was raised by her mother and her aunts, Antiope and Melnalipi. She was taught warrior skills as well as lessons of love and peace. The Greek gods also gifted her with powers of strength, wisdom, courage, beauty, sisterhood, and flight. Diana was also equipped with bracelets that could deflect bullets and a magic lasso that would force villains to submit and tell the truth by binding them. People pointed out that this was a nod to the lie detector that Marston helped invent. Marston depicted Wonder Woman getting tied or chained up in the comics to metaphorically show how society forces women into submissive roles to bind them, so to speak. He frequently depicted Wonder Woman as powerless when chained. He saw these chains as a symbol for the types of limitations placed upon women in that time. He also included pin-up aesthetics and subtle implications of bondage as well. Wonder Woman was created during World War II and was initially depicted fighting Axis military forces as well as the occasional supervillain. Over time, her stories emphasized more on characters, deities, and monsters from Greek mythology. She went from superhero to warrior. Wonder Woman would not be the icon she is today without the comic books. Her first appearance was All-Stars Comic number 8 in December 1941. 
Her first cover was in Sensation Comics number 1, January 1942. And then her first solo issue was DC Comics number 1, July 1942. Even during her solo issues, for example, this is volume one, which was ran from 1942 to 1986, you can see that she has gone through many appearance changes. This is volume two, 1986 through 2000. Volume three, 2006 through 2011. Volume four, 2011 to 2016 and volume 5 which was from 2016 to the current year. Besides starring in her own comic book series, Wonder Woman has appeared in other comics and even had special issues created in her name. Going through and researching this brought back a lot of memories for me and especially the Wonder Woman Linda Carter edition, the Scooby-Doo team-up, and when she did um, the cameo with Bionic Woman. Surprisingly, Wonder Woman was not the first comic named after a female character. That honor goes to Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, which came out three months prior to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman had brought some controversy into the comic book world, not only with her being a powerful woman in a man's world, but also with her appearance and being accused of inciting lesbianism. In March of 1942, the National Organization for Decent Literature had banned Wonder Woman because she was not sufficiently dressed and was put on a blacklist of publications disproved for young people. Some groups even encouraged burning any comics depicting Wonder Woman. The writers of the comics even made Wonder Woman lose her powers in 1968. The reason given? For a man. William Marston must have been turning over in his grave. He passed away in 1954 over that concept. Maria Steinman, a famous activist for women's rights, co-founded a feminist-themed magazine called Miss Magazine. Steinman was a huge fan of Wonder Woman, but was disappointed in the way the character had changed and that her superpowers were stripped. Steinman decided to raise hell lobbying DC Comics and featured her on the cover of her magazine and reprinting some of her Golden Age stories. Needless to say, soon after, Wonder Woman was back to her original storyline. Being banned, people burning the comics, losing her powers, you have to wonder, was it all just because of the way she looked and about the battle for women's rights? Or was it solely based on the fact that her creator was in a poly relationship and dabbled in bondage? Wonder Woman also had a cartoon strip in the newspaper in 1944. As I stated with the comics, during the years, Wonder Woman's look has changed. For example, this 1941 to 1968 mostly changed was her costume length and then her shoe apparel. That she was first at boots and then she went into like a gladiator type sandal. And then in the 60s, she kind of did a mod version. And then you can see as the years go on, her look changed radically. Um, in 1982, they changed the chest emblem to from an eagle to the logo, the W logo. And her, it seems like her bottoms got shorter and shorter throughout the years. In 87, they did a longer, curlier hair version. And then in 1994, they did kind of more of a tough girl. And then in the 2000s, um, the 2006, they kind of went back to the original look. 
um, 2010, she took a dramatic change. 2011, it was noted that this was the shortest that her bottoms were. And then in 2016, they decided to go with more of a warrior type. Not only has her look changed throughout the years, but also her logo. And then from comic books, we went to animation. The first animated series that Wonder Woman appeared on was The Brady Kids in 1972. And as you can see, she has appeared in many animations after that. In September 2017, the movie Professor Marston and the Wonder Women was a biography drama about William Marston. This movie does go into the backstory of the creation of Wonder Woman, but the movie focuses mainly on his unique relationships. It explores a poly relationship the state of being in love or romantically involved with more than one person at the same time, and does touch on the explorations of dominance, submission, and role play along the lines of BDSM. This was actually a good movie and I do recommend it. Don't worry, some scenes are risque but not graphic, but it still definitely is not made for kids women that have played Wonder Woman. Some made it to the screen, some not. Linda Harrison starred in a five minute short called Who's Afraid of Diana Prince? It was for a potential Wonder Woman series in 1967, but it was never produced. And after you watch the clip, you can see why. Single and 28 million years old. 27. Oh, what's a million? All right, Diana. Save the world. But don't forget to wear your galoshes. There's a job to be done by Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, who knows she has the strength of Hercules who knows she has the wisdom of Athena, who knows she has the speed of Mercury, and who thinks she has the beauty of Aphrodite. Then came Kathy Lee Crosby, she starred in the 1974 TV movie, Wonder Woman. Tuesday movie of the week. The Wonder Woman, she's here. She should be eliminated. C'est la vie. Introducing Kathy Lee Crosby as Wonder Woman. After the TV movie with Kathy Lee Crosby did not sell, a new concept set during World War II and starring my favorite, Linda Carter, was developed. The pilot, the new original Wonder Woman, aired on ABC in 1975. The series began its four-season run the following year. Possess. In your satin tights, 
fighting for your rights and the old red, white, and blue. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Now the world is ready for you and the wonders you can do. of the Council have been observing Earth and humanity for quite some time now, since the Neolithic. The series with Linda Carter was a hit and gathered much attention. I thought it was cool some of these old advertisements I found because it brought up memories of some other TV shows that I watched as a child. And then also the covers of the TV guides were, were kind of cool to look at. Andrina Pilecki filmed a pilot episode in 2011 for a new contemporary Wonder Woman TV series, but it was not picked up by NBC and it was never aired. We caught a glimpse of the new Wonder Woman in 2016 Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, played by Gal Gadot. A year later, we finally had the origin story of this comic book heroine. I used to want to save the world. This beautiful place. But the closer you get, the more you see the great darkness within. I learned this the hard way a long, long time ago. What is your mission? To stop the war. What war? The war to end all wars. Weapons far deadlier than you can ever imagine. A war can be ours. Whoever you are, you are in more danger than you think. I cannot stand by while innocent lives are lost. Be careful, Diana. Who is this woman? She's my um, secretary, sir. She's a very good secretary. The world needs you. You know what you need to do. Nothing good is born from lies. And greatness is not what you think. Wonder Woman has come a long way from 1941. This picture was for the opening of the first Wonder Woman movie, and Linda Carter came to show support for Gal Gadot, and they became friends. No jealousy, no hate, just love. I think they have made everything you can think of with Wonder Woman on it. Do you have any Wonder Woman memorabilia? Comment below. Posters, plaques, memes, digital imaging, all containing funny sayings or even inspirational words in Wonder Woman style. And this one will always be my favorite. No matter what size, nationality, or disability, we all have the power within us. We are all Wonder Women. 
Thanks for watching. And if you made it through the entire video, you deserve an award. As always, comment below.